We've looked at the profile of the horse looking for balance and proportionality, but there are two other views that we really need to see, and that is the front view and the rear view, looking at the hind legs and the front legs separately. So one of the things that we will start with is literally from a front view, we'll start by looking at the horse's ears, working our way down the face to the eyes, the muzzle, then start down through the neck and go from point of shoulder to point of shoulder, looking for good physical development in the chest area. We wanna see the legs well separated as this horses are. And if we were to measure, and this is just a very crude way of doing it, if we have this width of measurement at the chest, we would like to find at least that much measurement or slightly less at the base or where the front hooves touch the ground. And in this particular case, we're quite pleased with the width of chest and the front leg stance on this horse. The other thing is, is that just look for structural correctness. We'll run an imaginary line from the point of the shoulder down the front leg through the center of the knee. And then suddenly we get lost in the feathers, but we want to put it at a point where the toe of the hoof is touching the ground so that we can see how structurally correct the joints are as well as the placement of the leg under the horse. In this particular case, this horse appears to be quite good. So let's turn him around and let's look at the hindquarters. And you need to be careful with any horse, especially if it's a horse that you're looking at to buy. You know, you want to make sure that horse knows you're there. You want to not only talk to him, but you also want to touch him with your hand and make some kind of contact that way so that if you do just wa suddenly walk up and touch him, it's not like a strange horse that might uh, activate their defense mechanisms such as scary, being scared and running off. Now, just like we did on the front end, we want to see good width between the hocks. We will not find the hind legs standing as wide as the hocks are apart. They will be standing by nature of this particular breed a little bit closer. And the horses will have a tendency to toe out. That means that the front of the hoof where the toe is will be pointing, not in a straight line, but anywhere from one to two, possibly three degrees off the straight line so that it tends to toe out. But structurally, the leg itself is straight from the point of the buttock through that imaginary line that will come through the point of the hock down the center of the cannon and go right to the ground, making a very good vertical line. And I can probably demonstrate that with this divider. Move the tail out of the way again. And you can see that if we put the upper end at the point of the buttock, it does come through the center of the hock and can actually be used all the way down the hind leg. We like the physical development of this horse through the hip. We also will look up in the stifle area, this region right here, and we will look to see that the horse is well developed and muscled in this area, also down into the gaskin. And one of the things that we don't see very often, but it does show up, you want to make sure that where the point of the hip is on this side is equal to the point of the hip on the other. You want to make sure that the horse doesn't have the appearance of one hip higher than the other. And we will see that from time to time. If the horse has that, that's a serious defect and we need to stay away from horses with that type of defect. So let's look at the front legs of the horse. Looking at a profile view, we've looked at the front view and we talked a little bit about the profile before, but let's go and examine the front end a little bit more carefully. And one of the things that we want to do is look at the relationship of the animal's forearm in relationship to the animal's cannon. In this particular case, well, we'll use our dividers to go down here and measure from the ergot area, the back of the pastern, to what we call the accessory carpal bone, which is a bone that points right here at the back of the knee. And we lay it, that measurement up here, what we see is where my finger is up here at the top is about two and a half inches, that the forearm is about two and a half inches longer than the length of the cannon. 
that is very desirable. That tells us that this horse has the ability to reach forward with his front leg and be able to stride up and give us a very good length of stride at either the walk and the trot. We can't ignore the fact that we're also talking about the length of the shoulder and the angle of the shoulder, which actually comes and fits almost about a 52 degree angle, which would be measured by the inside of this arc, and tells us that this horse has a reasonably good shoulder angle. So, before we move away from this, we also want to talk about the size and definition of the joint. This horse has very proportional joints, has good bone and substance. He has a masculine appearance to him. And as we palpate the leg, one thing that we have to remember is, is that knee joint is going to be, that knee joint should be very large, tapering into a good clean cannon bone down to the fetlock joint and buried in this feather is the fetlock joint, the pastern, as well as the hoof of the horse. One of the things that I suggest you do is pick up the hoof and look at the hoof on the horse. Look at the shape of the hoof. Look at the length of the heels, the overall shape of the hoof to see that this horse has a good solid sound hoof.